has been a Cinderella year for the University of Nevada at Las Vegas under Jerry Tarkanian of active coaches, the best percentage-wise. Finally, last week, the running Rebels hit the jackpot. Number one ranking on the strength of long-range shooting star Larry Anderson and the strong All-American candidate center Sidney Green, their heart and soul. Sidney Green, power under the boards and a smooth touch outside. This week, things started to turn sour. Playmaker Danny Tarkanian hit with a case of bronchitis. Freshman power forward Eldridge Hudson out of action with a recurring knee injury. And so on Thursday, the longest winning streak in the nation, 24 games, came to an end at conference rival Fullerton State. Sparked by Leon Wood, who leads the nation in assists, Fullerton State knocked UNLV from the unbeaten ranks. And today, things don't get any easier. UNLV tries to get back on the winning trail, invading Morgantown, where the Mountaineers of West Virginia hardly ever lose. And we are inside the West Virginia Coliseum, where last night, fans set bonfires outside for the few remaining standing room seats. This has been a red-hot ticket, sold out for weeks. The West Virginia Mountaineers have won 43 of their last 44 games. One loss since 1980, so you know what Nevada Las Vegas faces today. The Mountaineers virtually unbeatable. And we have 16,000 plus. Nevada Las Vegas has already clinched the PCAA title, 24 and one. The West Virginia Mountaineers looking for a tournament berth, 18 and six, a half a game in front in the Atlantic 10 Conference. And you can just feel the electricity here at the West Virginia Coliseum, everyone, as we welcome you. I'm Dick Stockton. Now, for UNLV, it's a chance to immediately bounce back from their first setback of the year. And for those who have criticized the schedule for the running Rebels, a victory here at West Virginia, a tough road court, would put it be a big feather in their cap. As for West Virginia, well, there's nothing like knocking off the number one team. The Rebels are number one right now. They want to build some momentum. West Virginia, with national exposure, looks to win today at home. And I'm very pleased to be working alongside Steve Grody. When we talk about the Mountaineers, Greg Jones, their outstanding guard, has to be the key. Dick, I don't think there's a team in the country that revolves around one player offensively more than West Virginia. Jones is a great athlete. He's strong. He's quick. He's fast. He plays 40 minutes a game. He's an outside shooter. He's probably best at taking it to the basket. He is their offense. Everyone talks about the running Rebels as a team that likes to run. West Virginia doesn't exactly like to walk the ball up. They can't beat UNLV in a half-court game. They've got to get it up and down the floor, get that easy 15-footer. Now, ironically, that plays right into UNLV's hands. So who's better at the transition game? The next 40 minutes will tell. All right, we expect a fast-paced game, baseline to baseline. UNLV 24-1, West Virginia 18-6, and, and we'll be back to meet the starting lineups for this afternoon's game in just one moment. Sports presents NCAA Basketball. Today, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Running Rebels and the West Virginia Mountaineers live from West Virginia Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia. Sponsored by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. And by the Big Shaver, designed to give you days of close, comfortable shave. You know, there's nothing like getting together for a nice, friendly game of cards. That's right. Jim brings the cards. Uh-oh. Mickey brings the doll. Ooh. Nice doll. <laughs> and I bring the beer. Light beer from Miller. Light tastes great. It's got a third less calories than the regular beer. And it's less filling. And you don't want to get filled up when you're dealing with these guys. Who... Okay, Numa, cut the cards. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. <laughs> Mr. McEnroe, that's a very close shave. You must be joking! That ball was in! No, Mr. McEnroe, your shave. It's very close. Of course! I shave with Bic. You earn millions and shave with a 20-cent Bic? Look, why pay more for fancy handles and tricky tots when I get lots of close shaves with Bic? Advantage, McEnroe. He's right. I don't have to shave with a 20-cent thick. 
But I do. Joey, the fastest way possible. Yes, sir. Atta boy. When information has to get to branch offices, very often it takes more time than it should. That's not productive. And productivity is what IBM office systems are all about. When are the price changes going out, Mary? Right now. Today, IBM has systems that with just the push of a few buttons... Are the prices in from the main office? Looks like they're in. ...can speed information to all of your business locations in minutes. IBM Office Systems. With more than 40 years of experience, no one is more committed to the office. Where it is now and where it will be. Where will you be? The boss says it's a rush. Right. IBM. UNLV against West Virginia Live. Sold out West Virginia Coliseum. And the officials, two of them from the Atlantic 10. On the left, Mickey Crowley. On the right, Jim Murray. And the official from the PCAA is Jack Diddy. Now today, we'll be playing under Atlantic 10 rules. And that means we'll have the three-point field goal from 19 feet, 9 inches, and a 40-second shot clock. The three-point field goal favors Vegas. They've got more potential three-point shooters. The 40-second shot will only come into play if West Virginia gets in a half-court situation. They'll run the clock. All right, and now the starting lineups for the game, beginning with the guards. For UNLV, 6'2", junior Jeff Collins. Greg Jones, we've talked about him, the senior for West Virginia. The coach's son, Danny Tarkanian, a junior at 6'2", and a freshman. It's Dale Blaney, a big guard at the spot for the Mountaineers. The centers, Sidney Green, All-America candidate, a senior. Tim Carney, a junior at 6'11", for West Virginia. Larry Anderson, the good outside shooter, 6'6", senior. Russell Todd, 6'7", senior. Good inside player. And Paul Brown. Brozovich, the junior, and sophomore Lester Rowe, the other forward matchup. Eldridge Hudson had a hyperextended left knee. Now there's loose cartilage. He should play today, but is not going to be near active and not nearly what he normally performs. He cannot jump, but they're going to need him out there at some point. So now we're ready for the jump. Sidney Green jumping against Russell Todd, controlled by the dark uniform UNLV Rebels. Virginia opening up in his own defense throughout the 40 minutes they'll they will use multiple defenses don't be surprised to see some gimmicks maybe a box and one triangle and two Anderson shooting outside from three-point range and it's tipped in by Brozovich now UNL Dick throughout the year UNLV has played both man-to-man -man and zone I believe in this ball game they're gonna play zone as long as they can get away with it Greg Jones is number five. He's the point guard. Russell Todd misses, and Anderson the rebound. Lead pass to Collins, and it was short, but it's going to be UNLV ball knocked out of bounds by the Mountaineers. Now, the very first trip down the floor for West Virginia, they missed a jump shot. I believe in a half-court situation, they will not win unless someone proves they can shoot that 18-20 footer. And I know you're not convinced that they have that effective outside shooter. I don't believe so. And Greg Jones uh, is a threat from the three-point range. Everyone else is, has limited range. Here's Collins. Collins hits the jumper. Transfer from Arizona. And Jerry Tarkanian with the sad eyes and the fuzzy head. He's been around a long time and an 80% winning percentage. Russell Todd in the corner. Tim Carney handles the ball for the first time in the center. Blaney, the 6'4 guard. Got a kick ball over there. That, that'll give him a new 40-second clock. Gail Catlett, who played in West Virginia in his fifth year. Last year, the Mountaineers won 23 in a row, the longest in the country before UNLV. And they had a fine 27 and 4 years. Now, we talk about tempo, Dick. Certainly, they want a transition game. West Virginia does. When they played best this year, though, in the half-court situation, they have run the shot clock. They don't like to play half-court. Russell Todd inside. Second leading scorer, Russell Todd from North Fork, West Virginia. And Dick, like many of the schools out in, in, in the eastern part of the country that you see, they'll, they'll <laughs> shower the floor with uh, confetti and what have you after the first basket. We've got to stop in action. And you know, if they do that after a West Virginia basket when the Mountaineers want to press, that's not going to help the Mountaineer cause. You're absolutely right. That, I, I, it should stop now. That's got to be it. 
Four to two here. Now West Virginia in a man. I think you'll, you'll see early, after made baskets, they'll go man. When they miss, it'll be zone. Collins hit the first shot, forced this one. Picks up the rebound, and Brozovic converts. So Brozovic with a second basket. He is a transfer from the University of Pittsburgh. These teams have never played before. This is their first meeting. West Virginia with a rich basketball tradition, and Tim Carney lost it out of bounds to UNLV. With injury problems, with being on the road, with some sickness problems, you got to be worried about getting off to a quick start. This is good for UNLV. UNLV has a reputation of getting off to a slow start. The Mountaineers the other, and now Collins penetrating well, draws the foul. Foul is charged to Russell Todd in our first foul of the game. I think right off the bat, Dick, you've got to be impressed in the half-court situation with UNLV's passing ability. Certainly, Brozovich, anything he gives you offensively is something that you don't count on going into the ballgame. Collins double team and a good defense. It's still UNLV ball. Paul Brozovich, a junior from Glassport, Pennsylvania, has more, averages more rebounds than points. So anything he gives them offensively is a tremendous bonus. Tarkanian, they double on him, and Sidney Green double teamed inside Brozovich. And they're going to call three-second violation against UNLV, and the Tark is off the bench. Well, when Sidney Green gets the ball, their teammates expect him to shoot. However, that time, a good help defense made him uh, force one extra pass, three-second call. Tim Carney, you can see how much room they give him to shoot. The other forward, Lester Rowe, Laney. And the basket will count, and a foul. It's Blaney's basket. The foul is charged to Larry Anderson. situation, Dick. Somebody from West Virginia, they need a big game out of somebody. You know Todd and Rowe are going to play well inside. Jones is going to be a factor the entire four minutes. Somebody has to come out of, the, out of the woodwork and play well. Possibly it'll be Blaney. Blaney is a 6'4 big guard. Became a starter when the veteran guards didn't pan out this year. And they promptly won seven in a row when his ins after his insertion into the starting lineup. They won eight of nine all told. There's Larry Anderson firing it up, and they're going to call a foul, a push on Lester Rowe. Lester Rowe, the sophomore from Buffalo, New York, pushing. Gail Catlett can't believe the call. This is a this is a play that is so hard to prevent yourself from making. The, the ball is the ball is going to come right to Lester Rowe, but he's got his hands on the man. He just at, at a natural instinct pushes off a little bit. It was a great call by the official. It is a second team foul. West Virginia has two team fouls and UNLV one. And a technical foul has been charged against Gail Catlett. A technical foul against Gail Catlett. Tarkanian also is not happy. And Larry Anderson will go to the line and shoot. On bench technicals, two free throws in possession. There's Catlett. Eight to five, UNLV, ranked number one. I think UNLV has come out super poised in this game. Uh, they really have. And that's something I, I think you don't expect from Jerry Tartani, Tartanian's teams unless you know them. Picked off. He walked. Nothing called. And Lester Rowe misses. And a foul on the follow-up by Tim Carney. So Carney will go to the line as Paul Brozovich picks up his first personal foul. Jerry Tarkanian in his 10th year. Team fouls are two apiece, and Tim Carney, a junior from Falls Church, Virginia, goes to the line. He inherited the center position. Phil Collins and Donnie Gibson were graduated, and what was a strong point for the Mountaineers last year has turned into perhaps the weak link. Well, and I think the fans at least feel that way. They've been on this young man uh, from the beginning. It's lessened a little bit. I think as the pressure has stopped, he's played better. Makes one of two. 
16 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Dick Stockton and Steve Grody here at the Coliseum at Morgantown. And there's the half-court trap that Gail Catlin uses almost every time then. Well, and if you know anything about UNLV, you know that they're a very strong second-half ball club. They've gotten off to some slow starts. This has got to be a little scary, them playing so well here at the beginning. Tipped out of bounds. It will be Nevada Las Vegas ball. Tarkanian claims that Brozovic was hit maybe once or twice. And hard, too. Anderson, they are all over him. He is their outside sharpshooter. High post is Brozovic. Open man Collins who penetrates. Brozovic. Tipped up. Anderson. Blaney on the loose ball, and here come the Mountaineers. Greg Jones. Stopped away. And Lester Rowe can't convert. Jones, now, there's going to there's gonna be a question from the West Virginia people. If you hit somebody with an elbow, it's a flagrant two-shot foul. You can see debris coming down all over the floor, but now watch. First, first, let's see all the action that takes place. Everybody's in on this play. This is a good no-whistle. There's a lot of action here. There's no violations. Now, when this rebound comes down, watch. Now, watch. When he gets it, he's going to swing his elbow. But Greg Jones, I believe there was body contact, and he moved in before the elbow came. That was Sidney Green, but one thing off the top, UNLV is not awed at all by the 16,000 crowd here in West Virginia. Sat down with mom, talk to dad, can't get it together, makes you feel sad. You know you can do it, you wonder where. You want it soon, because you really care. The services can help you so you not only get better, you really grow. Talking Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You'll work hard, they'll make you a man. Responsibility is part of the plan in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Prove you can make it, prove it to all. Serving your country and walking tall in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You've got it together, they'll see in a glance. Thanks to the services, you got the chance in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. In spite of backbreaking interest rates, unemployment, and recession, we've done what the experts said couldn't be done. We build a new Chrysler Corporation. We build it on high mileage and front wheel drive, on K cars and LeBarons, convertibles, luxury cars, sports cars. We build it on quality. That's why we back every new car we build for five years or 50,000 miles. Before you put your money down, think. You can go with Chrysler, or you can go with somebody else and take your chances. Look what we've done with Ramada. We're filled with things that are new. Now we're classy, stylish, a special place, a delightful escape for you. Ramada, we've got a new world for you. And still Christ right, look what we've done with Ramada. Ramada, we've got a new world for you. Tonight, these three girls show you how to survive from 9 to 5, the original comedy hit. Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, and Dolly Parton in 9 to 5. Loaded with action in the first few minutes of the game. That's the situation. Paul Brozovich has been a pleasant surprise thus far for the Rebels. There's one thing he does well on the offensive end. He has a knack for keeping the ball alive. He's done that in this game. He's also done well, gotten himself open and in position on the offensive end. Dick, there's ice all over the floor. They've got to stop it and clean it off right here. You pointed it out, and I know you tried to tell the official before we got back following the commercial, but uh, that's kind of dangerous here. Dick, I want to make another point, too. In a game earlier this year, played at Oregon State, USC was down about 12, 13 points in the second half. They started to come back. Someone threw something onto the floor. It hit the referee. He gave him a technical foul, gave the ball back to USC, and it almost changed the game. If they continue to throw stuff on the floor, the official's going to have to call a technical foul. You mentioned Brozovich, who certainly has been an early bright spot for UNLV. But I think Danny Tarkanian, who is playing with bronchitis, he could not run yesterday and is going to have to be spelled this afternoon, is another player that bears watching. He's the coach's son who was leading the nation in assists until this past week and led the nation last year. So it's very important that Tarkanian plays well and the rebounding story will be an ongoing story. Well, and rebounds in any ball game are always a, a big part of it. I believe that West Virginia has to get strong performances out of both their forwards, Todd and Rowe. 
So far, UNLV is handling the half-court trap well. Tarkanian, Brozovic is 6'10", has been a key man there. Tarkanian passing inside and was not a good pass. Lester Rowe got a piece of it, and here's Greg Jones. They double Greg Jones, seems every time down. Offensive foul, Russell Todd. Second personal on top. Now, Gail Catlin's up off the bench again. Here you see him right here. I think he's got a legitimate beef. On that pass, Brozovich went over the West Virginia players back. They got the ball anyway. However, on this end, no argument. That was a charging call. West Virginia, four team fouls. UNLV, two. Nearly five minutes gone by here in Morgantown, West Virginia. Against the trapping defense. Here's Collins working on the big guy, Tim Carney. And Larry Anderson throws up an air ball. West Virginia has it. That's rare. Oh, that one's got me shaking my head a little bit. I'd have thought that was a 60% chancer for him. West Virginia trying to score to tie it up. Greg Jones. Corner is Lester Rowe. Certainly for West Virginia offensively, they haven't had the transition game they'd like. Let's pay close attention to if they get a good shot like that on the half-court offense. Tim Carney, or that was Dale Blaney from Hartford, Ohio, a freshman. And we have a tie ball game, 8-8. Tarkanian quickly doubled up. West Virginia playing a very sharp zone, double, doubling the ball. Anderson is now 0 for 4. And here come the Mountaineers to try to take the lead. Virginia, and he steals it there. Blaney. Foul on Tarkanian. And UNLV wants a timeout, Steve. they got to stop it. This is West Virginia's game. This is the type ball game they want. You notice when they play well, Greg Jones is always around the ball, making the play. 13.57 remaining in the first half. West Virginia has forged in front. off a hundred foot waterfall, came up standing, oh. and popped myself open a cold light beer for milk. Ah, you lumberjacks. Well, one time a big mouth bass pulled me up a waterfall. <laughs> That's when you appreciate light beer, because it's less filling. Yeah, but it was a thought of light's great taste that kept me going when I was cutting timber in the Great Sahara Forest. Wait a minute. The hair is the desert. It is now. <laughs> light like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. No, speaking of forest, remember that time when... Bob and Sandy Davis needed two incomes to afford the home they wanted. Then tragedy struck. Allstate update. Joint mortgage protection. Sandy died before the mortgage was paid. Allstate Life's joint mortgage protection could have helped pay off their mortgage if either of them died for less than the price of two policies. But the Davises didn't have it. If you both work, talk to an Allstate agent. For life, home, and auto, you're in good hands with Allstate. This is the Xerox 620 Memory Writer. Since it came out, the people who make the Selectric have brought out a new, improved electronic Model 85. But it can't print as fast as the 620. It can't be upgraded to add more memory. And it has no display to make revisions and correct mistakes before they get on paper. Like the Xerox 620 does. That's why more and more selective typists select the 620 Memory Writer from Xerox. Chevrolet player of the game this week, Kenny Patterson, with the winning basket for the DePaul Blue Demons yesterday in beating Notre Dame. And he is our Chevrolet player of the game. And near the conclusion of every CBS Sports NCAA basketball game, Steve Brody and I select the Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet donates $1,000 to be equally shared by the general scholarship funds of both schools to assist students in all academic disciplines. Struggling so far, Larry Anderson, 0 for 4 from the field. But Anderson's the type of player, he's going to continue to shoot the ball. He's had games like this where he's gotten off to a slow start. Expect him to make them down the stretch when it's real important. Tarkanian out, the point guard, Jones. Jones shooting. Three-point play, second one for Greg Jones. And it's a six-point West Virginia lead. And UNLV following the timeout, trying to regroup the ball and a foul call. I don't think so. I don't think he fouled him. 
I thought it was a clean steal. I thought it was all ball. He may have bumped him after he knocked it out of his hands. For Lester Rowe is his second personal foul. So the two forwards for West Virginia, who Gail Catlett must rely on for rebounding, each have two personal fouls. Now UNLV has missed its last six shots. And now West Virginia, they made the basket. They'll go man-to-man -man defense. 14-8, West Virginia by six. Nearly an errant pass. Brozovic saves. Collins looking, they're looking for Sidney Green, who's not had a chance to touch the ball much. There he goes. Sidney Green from Brooklyn, New York, averaging nearly 22 points a game. And it's a 14-10 game. When you want to stop the crowd, get it into Sidney Green down low. He's got two for you. And you'll hear a pin drop. Renardo Brown, number 30, is coming to the ball. Great pass. A fine pass inside. Missing inside was Tim Carney. And here come the running Rebels, Tarkanian. He Tarkanian wide open, finds Collins. Sidney Green tries to keep it alive, and Greg Jones, open court. Blaney. Seven points for Blaney, he's the high scorer, and he has not missed from the field yet. Blaney's got seven, but give him, give most of the credit to Greg Jones. He's gotten the five points off Jones' passes for layups. West Virginia with a six-point lead, matching their biggest. UNLV took an early lead. Tarkanian is wide open. He has not been an effective shooter, and he's weakened with the bronchitis. And now the Mountaineers. Now, this is so impressive. They got a rebound off a missed free, off a missed shot, and this time they're going to walk it up. Tempo control. They try an alley-oop, Tim Carney. It just doesn't work, and here come the Rebels, trailing by six. I don't know how long Tarkani is going to stay in there because he really looks like he's laboring out there. You and I both talked to him yesterday. He is very, very exhausted. Collins with a good shot penetrating. He is an outstanding penetrating guard. Transfer from the University of Arizona. Mountaineers content to walk it up with a four-point lead. 11.25 remaining in the first half. Dick Stockton and Steve Brody. NCAA basketball on CBS. Not to belabor the point. We know West Virginia plays well in transition. We've seen that. This could be the key, though. It's going to be a tight ball game. Are they going to be successful working and being patient against the zone? Good trap. Good double-team defense on Lester Rowe. They have seven seconds on the shot clock. And Jones is out on top. Blaney will try it. It's blocked a little. And it's picked off inside Tim Carney. Follow up, and he draws the foul. So West Virginia got some benefits as substitutions come in the ball game. Five zero red, hack two. Greg Jones is the open court player who needs the ball, and he sets up everyone on this team, Steve. Well, he's, he's, he's shown us that he can pull up and hit the three-pointer from right there. Here he makes the play with the great pass. Of course, Gail Clat Catlett is his biggest fan. He believes this kid's got a long basketball future. Tim Carney is on the line shooting two. That's 14 foul against UNLV. Gary Graham, number 32, a freshman guard, comes in for Danny Tarkanian for UNLV. Eric Booker, number 15, is also in for the running Rebels as you look at the West Virginia bench and Gail Catlett. Bob Smith and his assistant, Gary McPherson. The Mountaineers are not a good free throw shooting team. They're doing all right so far. We talk about the substitutions. By design, West Virginia will play eight or nine. I think we'll see more substitutions for UNLV because of injuries and sickness. Good pass and good play by Brozovich. Open and Green hit him. 17 to 14, West Virginia. Nearly halfway through this opening period. Into the game, Tony Washam, a senior guard who was a starter earlier this year. Washam is number 11. He has the ball now. Jones, Renardo Brown from Michigan. Outstanding passer. We saw a glimpse of that earlier. Lester Rowe in the corner. Shifting zone. Three-point attempt. Three now for Greg Jones. And there is Sidney Green on a feed from Gary Graham. The freshman feeding the senior. And once again, UNLV comes right back. Touche. You know, UN the great teams will do that. They'll, they'll call the crowd making a great play like that. They're going to call the foul on Nevada Las Vegas. 
Jones finally missed the three-point attempt and Washington got the rebound and was fouled. Now, this has happened a couple times, Dick. They've got to talk to their guards. The long rebound so often is just as important as the one that, that comes down right by the rim. Their guards have got to start blocking out to get that long rebound. One of the greatest plays in basketball, the alley-oop. And Sidney Green at 6'9", who added a lot of muscle this year, still has the finesse, and that play worked perfectly. Well, now, let me tell you something. The pass so often is more important than the shot. That was not only great lob pass, you got to remember, that lob pass came from about 30 feet from the basket. And from a freshman, Gary Graham. Loose ball inside Tim Carney. No basket. We'll have a foul before the shot. And it's going to be against Green. I believe Sidney Green has his first personal foul. Sidney Green, they ask him to do everything. He is the all-time leading UNLV rebounder. And going to the line will be the center, Tim Carney, who spent a lot of time at this time so far. If, one thing Car if there's one thing Carney does that impresses me, he knows what to do with the ball when he gets it close to the basket. He's got a good head fake. He knows how to use his body to shield and get the foul. He's been effective. He's been a part of this ball game. He was used sparingly in his first two years. He showed some flashes against St. Bonaventure at 14 points, 11 rebounds, four block shots. But I think they're spoiled from uh, the days of Gibson and Collins. Well, I'll tell you what, a good performance here today, and I think he's rewriting his story. Missed the free throw, and they're going to call the foul this time on West Virginia. Frank Jones. Greg Jones, second personal foul. So Rowe, Todd, and Jones, three of the starters, have two personals each. 16 fouls. Each team has six. One more than in the penalty. There's one player from West Virginia cannot afford to lose. It's Greg Jones. You love aggressive play, but he can't pick up fouls on his free throws. Eric Booker, double team, transfer from San Francisco. He was touched by a West Virginia player, so there's no backcourt violation. Booker in a crowd. 10 remaining in the first half, and UNLV is staying close. Now, I think the important thing right now for UNLV, will they be as poised as they've been the whole game without Tarkanian in the lineup? That's the story. If they can hold their own with Danny on the bench, because he is the glue of the ball club, Steve, you're right, that's going to tell a lot. And this will be... No over and back. That ball came in from out of bounds. From out of bounds behind, right. Nine minutes to go. Five-point lead. Graham... Freshman. This is the shot. Green crashing the boards, and then they call it against Green, and it'll be against Larry Anderson. Anderson. On the bench for the running Rebels is a huffing and puffing Danny Tarkanian, who did not run yesterday and is having a lot of trouble breathing. Anderson has his third personal foul, and he is the big outside threat for Jerry Tarkanian. Three fouls on Anderson. And now the injury to Hudson is even bigger than it, we knew it, it was coming into this ball game. On the line here is Renardo Brown from Highland Park, Michigan. Freshman. That was, by the way, the seventh team foul against UNLV. Outstanding passer. Brown perhaps best used as a big guard in the lineup as a forward. Biggest lead of the game right now for West Virginia, seven points. With 8.45 remaining in the first half. And a double team gets the ball away from Gary Graham. Washington. That's a great block. Oh, they called the foul. Freshman from Baltimore, Gary Graham. Now let's take a look right here. Oh, he did. With the left hand, he got his right wrist. Danny Tarkanian, after a short respite, is coming back in the ball game. Here's Danny, and he is replacing Graham, who showed pretty well for a freshman in a pressure game in the short time he was in. But by design, as soon as Danny Tarkanian goes out, they go with even more intense half-court pressure at work. Now, Tarkanian's got to get them a little calmed down. You know, they have not... I don't think they've gotten the shot they want to get uh, in the half-court situation. Sidney Green's not getting the ball. Let's get it to him on the block. This is the free throw, Washington. So Washington missed both free throws, and Collins looking to Brozovich. Finds the open man, Booker. 
Jones is on Tarkanian, his own defense. Now Washington is all over Collins. Double team. Three Eric pointer. Booker hits a three-pointer. So the first three-pointer of the game for Nevada, Las Vegas, and Eric Booker, the junior from San Francisco, who is now eight for 15 from the three-point range. Nearly eight minutes remaining in the first half. 23 to 19, West Virginia leading. Tony Washington in the backcourt number 11, along with Greg Jones. Russell Todd, number 33, trying to get position inside. They have 14 seconds on the shot clock. And a foul called as Todd was fouled by Brozovich inside. They wanted to get Russell Todd, who's their best inside player, free. Take a look at the way they're attacking the zone. If you ever wanted to draw it up on paper and do it on the floor, this is how you would design it. Watch this. Pass, pass. Nobody dribbles. Now, here's the real... See, there's the pass right there. I think the Mountaineers are both surprising us and their own coaching staff. Even the coaching staff agreed. A half-court situation, a half-court game, we can't win. They played better in the half-court situation than UNLV. That's why they're on top. Not only that, but UNLV is in foul trouble because Brozovich, who has played well so far, normally a reserve, has three personal fouls. He's been replaced by 6'9 senior John Copeland, number 35, who was really ailing with the flu yesterday. He's the sickest of all of them. He's the sickest of all, and Tark Terry Tarkanian forced to go with Copeland now in place of... Brozovich with three fouls, so this is something he really wanted to avoid. Well, one thing you've got to have to be a great college basketball team is depth. We'll find that out today about UNLV. It's been a West Virginia game. They've maintained the lead, but it's 6, 25 to 19, with 7.47 remaining in the first half. We'll be back. Well, moms and dads the world around give their kids the same old sound. Gotta go to school, be a big success. They wouldn't settle for anything less. Now they've learned whatever you seek, you'll help yourself to reach your peak in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Need a trade? Looking for a skill. They have hundreds to fit the bill in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Want more school? Don't have the bread. They'll have pay to get you ahead. Talking Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Mom and dad, they'll want to shout. He's made it big. There's no doubt. Thanks, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. The best beer for the best time of the day, Miller High Life. We engineered the new Ford LTD around its most important component, its driver. Because every mile a family car is driven comfortably and quietly, it must be ready to react immediately. LTD suspension of gas-filled shocks, struts, and stabilizer bars gives the driver a positive sense of control. The new Ford LTD. Comfort when you want it. Capability when you need it. Have you driven a Ford lately? There's our situation in the first half. West Virginia leading by six points. UNLV 24-1 coming into this game. Trying to avoid a second straight setback. Field goal percentage, West Virginia shooting well, but there's the man that UNLV needs. They do. There were two people they had to control coming in the ball game. West Virginia wanted to stop Sidney Green and stop Larry Anderson. Now, early in the ball game, Brozovich got himself open inside because the defensive pressure was elsewhere. Now, Anderson hasn't shot well. Brozovich is out of the game. You've got to go down to the block and get, get it to the stud. Notice West Virginia's picking up UNLV even a little earlier now, trying to take advantage of Tarkanian. Now, they're in a man-to-man -man situation. This would be the best time to go inside and get it to Sidney Green. Looking inside is Booker. Exactly to do that to Green, who loses the ball out of bounds. West Virginia ball. Well, they had the right idea. Well, you know something, Dick? We talk so often about not putting a, a fella in the game late in the ball game when he hasn't played the whole time because of his hands. Sidney Green hasn't touched the ball. That's the first time, it might be the second, third time he's had it the whole game. He might as well come off the bench two minutes ago. Against the zone defense, West Virginia trying to up the lead to eight. Their biggest lead has been seven. Inside, Bernardo Brown, double team. 
Michigan missing is Dale Blaney in the rebound and a foul. John Copeland got the rebound and he was fouled by Dale Blaney. So we're going to see Copeland, the 6'9 senior, who was redshirted last year, go to the line. Jerry Tarkanian, only one year, fewer than 20 victories. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, report from Helsinki, the World Sprint Speed Skating Championships. John Tesh reporting, the CBS Sports coaches Paul Brent Musburger will be at CBS Sports Control in New York. Copeland misses the free throw, and here comes West Virginia with Jones. He's got to handle the ball every time out. Russell Todd misses Green. Had a hand on it. Todd scores. Foul. Sidney Green had a hand on it. Russell Todd converted, and West Virginia opens up their biggest lead. We talk about the difficulty in blocking out in a zone defense because you don't have a man assignment. West Virginia, on, West Virginia, on the other hand, has been a better offensive rebounding team against a man-to-man. -man. This time, however, Todd follows the shot. Now watch, he puts that up with his left hand. That's a nice little play, isn't it? Russell Todd misses the free throw. Second leading score on the team, averaging over 14 points a game. It is still UNLV ball. We understand that the scheduled final round of the Doral Open in Miami has been canceled because of heavy rains. Brent Musburger will bring you up to date at halftime. Inside to Copeland. UNL be using a lot of players they don't ordinarily use, and Copeland goes in, misses the shot, knocked away, taken down by Jones. Good ball handler is Jones. Gets the ball back. He has hit three three-pointers. That one is just for two, but Greg Jones has 11 points and is the leading scorer. It's, it's been his game. Tarkanian in a crowd. Copeland quickly gives it up. Jeff Collins, guard. Tarkanian and Collins at guard. Booker, Copeland, and Green up front. They give Copeland the shot, and he's just a little bit too rusty to be a factor, I think. I, I believe so. Three-point attempt was missed by Jones. Renardo Brown scores. ceremony, a badge is awarded to the Mercedes-Benz automobiles that reach 200,000, 500,000, and 1 million kilometers. Mileage they reach with proper care under some unceremonious conditions. The million kilometer badge is the final badge given. After that, Mercedes-Benz high mileage is its own reward. From Radio Shack, the TRS-80 Model 3. Buying this Model 3 was a smart business decision. It simplifies planning, projections, paperwork, and increases my productivity. And now that it's on sale at $500 off, we can have one at home, too. It plans our budgets, even educates and entertains the kids. A great investment, personally and professionally. The TRS-80 2-Disc Model 3, on sale for $17.95. Only at Radio Shack and Radio Shack Computer Centers, the computer experts. Virginia leading UNLV 31-19. Dick Stockton and Steve Brody. The crowd has been raucous here, certainly to help West Virginia. Does it affect UNLV in any way, Steve? I don't think so. The home court makes the home team play better. It generally doesn't affect the opposition. 
Greg Jones with 11 points, the leading scorer, and he does everything for this club. We saw the steal, we saw the passing, and the score. It's been his ball game. Everybody on West Virginia's team is playing better because Greg Jones is playing his best. And you know what? He has four rebounds, too, which is also the game high. So put Greg Jones down in every column. Collins looking for Tarkanian. Double team by Blaney and Renardo Brown. Inside Sidney Green, stripped away momentarily. Knocked away. Good play by Carney. He's been very alert in this game as Lester Rowe checks into the game for West Virginia. I think West Virginia did the most important thing right there in stopping Sidney Green. You cannot let him put the ball on the floor. Fullerton State took the ball away four or five times on that very same defensive play. Offensive rebounder is Green, tips it up and misses. And they may call him over the back. They do. They'll call Green on the foul. And for Green, that'll be number two with him. Dick, I'm a little bit surprised. They, the most important factor for a big man in college basketball is hands. I've been told that Sidney Green has a great pair of hands. Today, it doesn't look like he's catching the ball very well. He, did, he could not control that tip right there, a tip that he most probably should have made. He's our leading scorer, rebounder, block shots. But he did not have a good second half against Fullerton State, and he went in and told Danny Tarkanian, I think I cost us the game. He was kind of low after that, but yesterday in practice, I thought Sidney Green was geared to having a tremendous turnaround game. So far, it hasn't panned out, and West Virginia deserves a lot of credit. Well, sometimes physical play inside will take Sidney Green out of his game. Let's give Todd a lot of credit. Todd's been leaning on him the whole ball game. Todd's been a big factor. West Virginia has gone to the line 16 times, UNLV only three so far in this first half. Less than five and a half to play, 33 to 19. 14 point polls for West Virginia looking for win number 19. Booker, now watch, watch the way they're leaning on, on the green inside, especially Todd. He'll get down inside, preventing him from getting the ball, leaning on him all the time. Todd, number 33, as you watch him, he is sort of fronting green booker hits the jump shot and it's a 33 22 game on the three-pointer by eric booker that's his second three-point shot we have under five minutes at 450 remaining in the first half has really produced for West Virginia in this first half. It really has. One of the fellows we want, we talked about, Blaney, who just makes that pass, has really played an excellent game. That was Lester Rowe on the feed for Blaney. Anytime you get the ball in the middle against the zone, that's where you get your most offensive chances. And they go out of bounds. UNLV ball. Later today, CBS Sports Sunday brings you on top lightweight boxing. 1976 Olympic champion Howard Davis takes on undefeated Tony Balazar. 11 of his 17 knockouts have come in the first or second round and the World Sprint Speed Skating Championships from Helsinki, Finland, coming up later today. Turn it over again. Green lost the ball again. He has struggled, and he's the healthy one, although earlier last week he did not practice. The turnover story. Well, in West Virginia now, you get the feeling that they've got that killer instinct. They're really going after now, and that's what you got to do when you get a team down. You've got to make the big play. I would think, Steve, that UNLV would have to get it to around 10 or less to avoid getting into blowout territory before this half is over. Well, the shot clock and the three-point goal uh, are creating more comebacks in the second half. UNLV has been a second-half ball club because they're probably better conditioned now with the sickness problem. Uh, we'll have to see if, if that happens here today. But West Virginia's done a marvelous job making sure Sidney Green doesn't have his hands on the ball. Two seconds, and Blaney is forced to take a, a weak percentage shot. They get it out to Collins. We haven't seen UNLV do much of this today. Collins converts. But you know, yeah, but you know where the important play was? How many how many long rebounds has West Virginia got today? That time, Danny Tarkanian is in position. He makes the pass. 11-point lead for the Mountaineers. Three minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first half. Jones has been everything so far. Rebounder, passer, scorer, playmaker. And once again, we talked about the clock. West Virginia has worked that clock in half-court situations. A number of times they've shot it right at the buzzer. And they've gotten those second rebounds. Russell Todd lost the ball, it appears. But we will have another foul on the running Rebels. 
This one's on Danny Tarkanian. That's three on Danny. So now, on UNLV, Anderson, Brozovich, and Tarkanian, each with three fouls, and Sid Green has two, and they're going to bring in Gary Graham, the freshman again. Tark, young Tark, is going to have to sit down. Dick, I'm a little surprised at how easily West Virginia has been allowed to pass the ball to the middle of this zone defense. The next time down, let's, let's take a look. Let's find out how that's happening. Generally, the weak side guard has to get back on the foul line to prevent that pass. Todd misses the free throw. 2.45 to go. Deflected. Green. This is the short jumper, and coming down is Lester Rowe, sophomore from Buffalo, who's awfully tough and can jump. Laney with the trailer coming in and traveling called against Lester Rowe. West Virginia substitution coming in for the first time is junior forward Mike King, number 42 from Fair Chance, Pennsylvania. So this may be UNLV's last shot before the end of the half to try to narrow the gap. I, I believe this is a very important possession right here. Whistle as they go into green and a foul before the shot against West Virginia. Goal now, I, I think an important point. When a fellow's not playing well, why foul him and put him on the free throw line? Make him make a shot. He's got the ball in a position that I think is the toughest shot in basketball to make. 10-foot baseline jumper. Make him shoot it in the basket. Well, that was Mike King who just came in the game, and so... And how often do you see that? A guy comes in, he tries to get into the action, he commits a foul. Sidney Green, our first close-up look at it. One of 10 semifinalists for the Naismith Award as the best basketball player in the country. Jerry Tarkanian said, your team, Sid, will go as far as you take us. Yeah. He now has six points in the ball game and six rebounds, a game high. Nine-point lead for West Virginia, 2.20 to go in the first half. Now let's see if UNLV can play good position defense here and force the Mountaineers to take a shot from the perimeter. There's the perimeter shot from Tim Carney, sinks it. But that's a good shot. Now how'd they get it? They reversed the ball very quickly. Got the open shot on the baseline. maintain an 11-point lead. Their biggest lead was 14. Sidney Green getting into the flow. That basket will count. And a West Virginia foul. So, Jerry Tarkanian chewing on that towel as he likes to do. Seeing his team come back now to within nine and can make it eight. The personal foul is on the center, Tim Carney, his first foul. Now, look at the disparity between times going to the free throw line in this game. Now, when will this come into play, the second half? UNLV, when they're behind, they'll come out, they'll come out of their zone and play pressure man-to-man -man defense. But with the foul situation, you wonder if they can play that strategy. And there you go, a foul you don't want. John Copeland, who did not have a chance, and West Virginia the rebound, Copeland fouls him over the top. Copeland impresses me as being exhausted and sick, much like Danny Tarkanian. And usually when you get tired, you'll, you'll make a bad mistake like that. Exasperating look on the face of Tarkanian, and Gail Catlett's pleading another case. 151 showing on the clock, and shooting will be Lester Rowe. Lived up to his blue chip reputation as a freshman last year. This is the free throw. Mountaineers have been missing a few lately. They wanted a foul on Sidney Green with the elbows again. Nothing to do it. Five point lead. Trying to make it seven. Collins. They're in three point territory. Graham, the freshman. Open is Copeland. Copeland, no basket. Don't call the foul on Copeland. This is a big call. Let's take a look at it from underneath and see where the contact occurs. Boy, oh boy, that, that's hairline. It looked to me like the, the West Virginia defender was still moving in. That's a big call. A three-point play right there, and it's 37-31. Copeland, Tarkanian, Brozovich, and Anderson, all with three personal fouls here in this first half. But now the Mountaineers, nine-point lead. Mike King, 42, Washam number 11. And Quentin Freeman came in number 12. He's got good outside range, a good zone breaker. We'll watch for number 12 if the Mountaineers want outside shooting. They have 10 seconds on the 40-second shot clock. This 
seat inside Renato Brown and converted. King foul will go to the line to shoot. And this one is against Copeland, and that is going to be his fourth foul. Gail Catlett, who coached at Cincinnati before coming to West Virginia. And I don't think Tarkanian, Jerry that is, has enough players if all his people get into deep foul trouble. Well, I think the biggest thing that's happening right now is that because they've called so many fouls inside, the UNLV frontline people are playing very tentatively. They're not going after the rebounds. There have been so many second chances for the, for the Mountaineers. That's where they're winning the ball game. They're getting all the second shots, and they're going to the free throw line. Mike King had the horseshoes on the first one. UNLV has committed 16 fouls to nine for West Virginia in this first half. 58 seconds remaining in the first half. Don't, we'll, don't forget, we'll have the CBS coaches poll coming up. World Sprint Speed Skating, Brent Musburger. The corral open, final round, postponed because of rain. Last minute of the first half, and once again, the half-court pressure. Gary Graham tries to get it to Green. Carney all over him. Green is hemmed in. His baseline shot doesn't go. It's tipped up and missed by Booker. And UNLV still has it with 41 seconds to go. UNLV trying to come within nine points, and they have an opportunity here. 35 seconds to go in the half. And that foul against West Virginia on Tim Carney, his second personal foul. Dick, I've been very interested to watch Jerry Tarkane right now behave on the sidelines. While so many coaches, when they get upset, will get up and yell and scream, Tarkanian will stand at half court and just look at the official and say nothing. Well, you know I what? think that's more effective. He can, I think he can barely talk because he has the flu also. This free throw by Green. Bernardo Brown finds an opening and he travels. That's why he found an opening. So 28 seconds to go now. And Danny Tarkani has come in the ball game. A shooter and a passer. Anderson's in to shoot the three-pointer. Tarkanian to control. So positive. One shot. Yeah, I think uh, Jerry Tarkanian is looking for something to go out on a high note at halftime here. Brozovich is in the game. He's playing with three fouls. Tarkanian with three. That's Danny. Booker is in there with Anderson and Green. And a good trapping defense by West Virginia. Brozovich, Green, baseline. And he did not really take the shot you'd like with 13 seconds to go. West Virginia coming back. King. Foul. They'll call the foul on UNLV. And so the running Rebels just can't get in the second gear in this first half. Dick, if we had to pick out a piece of action that told the story the first half, this is it. Take a shot too soon. Don't miss it. Don't get the rebound. And, and foul on the other end. UNLV has done very few things right in the first half. Eric Booker committed the foul, and here's Mike King. One and one for Mike King. He's short, Green has eight seconds to go. UNLV pushing it up. 39 to 28 to score, and here's Larry Anderson missing the three-pointer. Booker puts it up, it counts, it'll count. Eric Booker he with got the a foul. follow up. The basket counts by Eric Booker, and a foul as well, and he'll go to the line, and injured is Renardo Brown, grasping his left knee. Brown is hurt, but let's take a look now at how UNLV just got in under the wire on Eric Booker's alert second effort. You know, we talk so much, Dick, about the last couple of minutes of the first half. Now, I don't think UNLV has played very well. I don't think they've done many things right. I don't know, though, if I've seen a play to end the first half that may change things around as much as that. Of course, he did. missed the free throw, and that hurts tremendously, as still on the court is Renardo Brown with an injured knee. Booker comes back, and UNLV still in range, Steve. Well, it's been all West Virginia in the first half. i got to believe they almost feel lucky to only be down nine points. You couldn't have convinced me that West Virginia was going to dominate the offensive board like they did in this ball game. UNLV's got to come, they got to come out saying, hey, it's time to start all over, fellas. Let's, let's play our game. But UNLV will come back in foul trouble. They're going to have to play their game. That's the end of the first half to score. West Virginia 39, UNLV 30, NCAA basketball will continue after this word from your local station. A 
Attention all personnel. MASH is going home Monday on a two-and-a-half-hour special. <laughs> Share the end of an era. That is all. This is CBS. We're at halftime here at the Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia, leading 39 to 30 over UNLV, team that lost its first game of the season on Thursday night against Fullerton State. And right now, it's time to take a look at the CBS Coaches Poll, our final one of the year, in cooperation with the National Association of Basketball Coaches. So let's take a look now at the number one team, Houston. They've won 18 in a row, longest in the country. Guy Lewis, the head man. Virginia coming on. A lot of people give them a, a lot of support. And what about Louisville with the win last week over Memphis State on CBS? They're going to be a threat. They clinched the conference. Arkansas, a real fine team, and they're going to have a big test against Houston Thursday night in Fayetteville, Steve. Well, UNLV is number five. I think we're seeing today here that they may suffer in a tournament from not playing against physical teams. Villanova, of course, the big win uh, over St. John's. I believe they're looking like the best team uh, in the East. Kentucky, they look like they're starting to regain that form they had early in the year playing very well. UCLA, you know, anytime they take the floor, they generally have the five best athletes uh, on there, on the floor. St. John's, of course, another very strong team, as the, as the Big East is in general. And North Carolina, despite their slump, losing three in a row, you know, that school always gets ready for the postseason tournament, and those are the top ten. So, Steve, what do you think of that rate? Well, uh, you know, I'm real interested to see Houston play some, some very uh, high-quality top ten teams. Uh, I believe they've got a very fine team. Louisville, I believe, is playing as well as anybody in the country. And when they get good guard play, uh, I don't know who can beat them. We'll see what Arkansas is all about, too, maybe this week. That's right, because maybe of all the teams in the top ten, they played the weakest schedule. All right, we also have another man with an opinion here, just passing through. He worked yesterday's Notre Dame to Paul game, Billy Packer. And I know this is our last CBS coaches poll in your impressions. Well, I said yesterday the team in first place would have a seven-foot center. Everybody thought I was talking about Sampson, but it was Elijah one. And Houston is a very physical club. We had him against Syria. I think it's a great team, uh, a team that can win the national championship, but you went down the pole, and there are a lot of guys on there that can. And these teams really get going when the postseason is getting ready. Well, I think so, and, and with Ted Kitchell out at Indiana, who now pushes them back into the, uh, the second ten, that probably takes away one of the teams that I thought was going to get to the Final Four. All right, so let's take a look now at that second ten. Steve, let's see, number 11, Missouri, still with those two fine players. Iowa, the Big Ten, they've been strong. Patrick Ewing at Georgetown. Indiana lost to Michigan State. The loss of Kitchell will really hurt them. They're 14. Well, number 15, Ohio State. You know, Eldon Miller is finally getting credit down in Columbus. He's doing a great job job and they're probably the Big Ten coach of the year they played well Boston College Syracuse uh, the Big East well represented Purdue has a very fine ball club I still have not seen Oklahoma play I, I can't wait to see their freshmen <laughs> all right thanks to Billy and thanks to Steve don't forget the road to Albuquerque begins in three weeks on CBS the NCAA championships and CBS coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this word from your local station Today, the sprint speed skating finale. Eamon Coughlin runs the mile. Howard Davis continues his comeback here on CBS Sports Sunday. This is CBS. Finance or what? Orville. Uh, I'm Wilbur. He's Orville. He's Wilbur and he's Orville. Finance what? A uh, flying machine. An aeroplane. It flies. Flies? Like a bird. You're crazy, Wilbur. That's Wilbur. That's Orville. Uh, I'm Wilbur. He's Orville. Don't let your projects get grounded. Security National will get your ideas flying. You're both crazy. If man were meant to fly, he'd have wings. Come on, come into Security National and Wheeling. We'll back your big idea. Ohio Valley Window Company is people. Professional people like Bob Pettit. Bob likes to work in his yard, play with his dog, and relax. Bob's a Sunday school superintendent at the First Baptist Church. Bob is proud to tell folks how easily Ohio Valley Window Company can replace their old drafty windows with Weathermaster solid vinyl windows and help reduce high fuel bills. Bob Pettit and Ohio Valley Window Company. Good people serving you with good products. Join me for the top news stories of the weekend in the news at 6.
Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA 1, and USA 1 is taking charge. Michelob Light, an exceptional light beer with a rich, smooth taste. And by Howard Johnson's Motor Lodges. At Howard Johnson's, we care about the things that count most. West Virginia Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia, where the Mountaineers are leading the running Rebels 39 to 30 at halftime, along with Steve Grody. Let's take a look at the halftime statistics. Good shooting for West Virginia, tough shooting for UNLV. I have to think the personal fouls is a major story here. It is the story. I, you know, like I said, they told me, UNLV, that when they get behind, they like to come out and go full court pressure all over the floor. Now, uh, I don't think they've ever found themselves in quite a tough position as this with both fouls and the health situation. And the scoring summary and Sidney Green, if you look at the personal fouls, there are three with three fouls and one Copeland with four, but Green with eight, Collins have six, and Booker also has eight points. The top scorers and Greg Jones, who has done just about everything for West Virginia, leads the Mountaineers. I think the thing that impressed me most about Jones, even when the crowd got into the game, he hit a couple three-pointers, we never saw him lose control. He never made a bad play the entire first half. Maybe one bad lob pass. That was it. And West Virginia, as you pointed out earlier, Steve, has played an outstanding game in a half-court offense, which until this day has been something that they really dreaded. That, that's, that has really been the key to this ball game. They have completely outplayed UNLV in the half-court situation. So West Virginia will inbound with Lester Rowe, number 24, and quickly they get it over to Greg Jones, number 5. Now, I think UNLV will stay in this zone. Hope they just... With the shot clock, they can get back closer into the ball game and don't have to go man to man. Jones, senior guard, Blaney, number 21's a freshman. He's 6'4, got good size. Brozovic defending him and traveling called against Blaney. So now UNLV has the ball, Steve. Well, UNLV has got to shoot a better percentage. Anderson's got to get hot. Uh, you know, give credit to the West Virginia defense. They didn't give them any good shots in the first half. Eric Booker is starting in place. Is it one forward position? Larry Anderson with the shot, and Anderson, who went to high school at Shenley near Pittsburgh, just about 60 miles away, that was first basket of the ball game. Now, that was close. I'm not sure if that was a three-point goal or not. UNLV's claiming it was, but they're not going to get it. It was just a two-pointer. 39 to 32, UNLV coming, coming back. As you pointed out, they've been a team that really starts to heat up in the second half. And West Virginia has blown some leads that they've had early. Missing Lester Rowe from the corner, coming back to Larry Anderson. And here's Danny T. Over to Booker. He has hit two three-pointers so far. Anderson wide open. Three-point attempt. It's good. Anderson brings Nevada Las Vegas to it in four. Don't be surprised by that. It's happened all year long where Anderson will go 0 for 6, 0 for 7. Down the stretch, he'll never stop shooting. He's got him back in it right now. So West Virginia's crowd silenced as UNLV comes out strong, and Jerry Tarkanian's team is starting to move. We are USA 1 and proving it at Chevy Cavalier with more power from a new high-compression 2-liter engine with electronic fuel injection. Cavalier has it. Accord doesn't. Corolla doesn't. Citra doesn't. Cavalier has new lower prices for 83, plus a full line of models, including one the leading imports don't even offer. Chevy Cavalier, from America's sales leader. USA 1 is taking charge. Set guys? Nah, you guys are just too tough today. For uh, Michelob Light? <laughs> you should have quit while you were ahead. Michelob Light for the win. Would good friends play this hard for a beer? Well, it is Michelob Light, a rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. Michelob Light for the win. I don't get it. You guys killed us. <laughs> don't blame <laughs> us. You suggested we play for a Michelob Light. Michelob Light. stay in a 
big, fancy hotel, you pay for a lot more than your room. You don't need a fancy hotel to get a big, comfortable room. You can get one at Howard Johnson's, along with a big bathroom, an oversized bed, and even some special care in our executive section, all at a sensible price. At Howard Johnson's, we don't care about the fanfare. We care about the things that count most. Opening minutes of the second half, Dick Stockton and Steve Grody. West Virginia's lead has been cut to 39 to 35 as Larry Anderson now with seven points. And this is the closest UNLV has been since a three-point deficit with nine minutes gone in the game. And now the West Virginia crowd wants to get the Mountaineers going again. Slope. Beginning of this half. And Dick, if this is going to be a game all the way to the end, UNLV has to have Sidney Green inside and Anderson outside. They missed him in the first half. They've got to have him in the second 20. Jones and Blaney outside. And UNLV just tightening up that zone just a little bit now. Nine seconds on the 40-second shot clock. Atlantic 10 rules. Blaney trying to get free for a shot. Brozovic in front. This is kicked up and his by Carney, and we'll have, we'll have a jump, and it'll go over to UNLV. The arrow going over to UNLV, of course, and Brozovic will inbound. There's the man we'll be watching, Sidney Green inside. The first few minutes, always so important in the second half. If there would be one way UNLV would want to get off to a great start, how would it be? Larry Anderson shooting the ball in from the perimeter. He's done that the first two times down the floor. Anderson picked up closely, left the row. Nearly a steal by Carney. Three-point attempt by Booker. He's hit two. And coming down with the rebound, Greg Jones loses it to Tarkanian. And an offensive foul against Danny Tarkanian. Four fouls on Danny Tarkanian. And he came over to his dad, and his dad put a hand up and said, just don't say a word. Coming into the game will be the freshman, Gary Graham. The first chance they have, 39 to 35, West Virginia. Now, Dick, 17 minutes, three minutes gone by in the second half. West Virginia has not scored. Lester Rowe driving close the hoop. They still have it in green. Tears the ball away. Good defensive rebound. Lead pass, Anderson. Anderson with the fake. To be playing like they're walking on eggs. Sidney Green with a two-point shot. Certainly, Dick, the point's important to get back in the ballgame, but the most important thing, with fatigue and foul trouble, now they can stay in the zone defense. That's what they'll do. They'll stay in that zone. They can't afford to lose any of these top players. That's Russell Todd from the corner. Russell Todd, who's the leading rebounder. 41 to 37, UNLV had cut the lead to two. It was 114 points. And it's almost a steal. They get it across in time. Pulling up is Booker. Rebound Booker. Booker blocked out of bounds. West Virginia ball. It was off Sidney Green. Carney with a block inside. He made a good defensive play. And the center, who has been derided a little bit by the fans throughout the season. I think he's played solid fundamental ball. I think you're absolutely right. He has been a big part of this game. He's taking up room in the middle. He's a factor. Here's Sidney Green. Finds Brozovich. There was contact. Still Nevada Las Vegas ball. I saw contact inside. All right, let's go back to this, this pull up here. And I didn't see the play because Jerry Tarkanian blocked my whole view. Now, we don't have a wide enough shot there. You know, he pulled up and took a good shot. Possibly he pulled up a little too soon. Anderson misses a three-point attempt from the top. And West Virginia turns it back over. So the Mountaineers still have not righted themselves, though they have a four-point lead with 15.48 remaining in the half. Second half, Quinton Freeman, number 12, good outside shooter in the ball game for West Virginia. And going out is Dale Blaney. The second half has started just like the game started. UNLV coming out, and they score the early points. Let's look for Greg Jones to get involved offensively. Inside green. Rebound. Lester Rowe. Lead pass. They throw it away. 
Dick Stockton and Steve Brody at the Coliseum in Morgantown. UNLV, the nation's top-ranked team, with their first loss of the year Thursday at Fullerton State. But West Virginia leading 41-37. They had a 14-point lead that was cut to two, and it is still, it's a four-point game right now, and they'll call another foul against Nevada Las Vegas, and they have been just deluged with fouls from the start of this game. I don't know that I've seen a team that is about to get in in as much foul trouble as, as Vegas is. And now that's just ridiculous. When the officials are whistling fouls, you have to alter your, your style of play. Booker that time just, just grabbed right on the guy's arm. Second foul on Booker. And they're going to call this foul. Russell Todd, the shooter. It's going to be on Booker again. Marquette in South Carolina, two independent teams that are driving to a postseason berth for the NCAA championship are in a barn burger down in Columbia where Marquette leads South Carolina 49 to 48 in the Warriors under Hank Raymond's going against Ray Myers to Paul Blue Demons who won the big game against Notre Dame. That's coming up next week, NCAA basketball on CBS. So we get very close to the road to Albuquerque in three weeks. We'll be into the opening rounds of the NCAA championship, which you will see on CBS all the way to the championship, the final four in Albuquerque early in April. Five minutes gone by. Graham, the freshman, misses. Sidney Green got a hand on it. The foul basket will count in the foul, and that's what UNLV is going to need plenty of in the second half. We said, what does UNLV need in the second half? They've got to have Sidney Green. They've got to have Larry Anderson. These fellows, I believe, have accounted for all the points in the second half. Now, you can block out, but when the ball goes up this high off the off the rim, generally the high, the best jumper is going to get it. Sidney Green, a chance for three points. And he's got it. The foul was on Quentin Freeman. Team fouls early here. Three against UNLV, one against West Virginia, and Green is the game-high scorer with 13 points. West Virginia will go to the line again. They are not a good free throw, free, free throw shooting team. And going to the line will be Quinton Freeman, the personal foul. Graham, his second, and West Virginia 12 of 24 from the free throw line. Now 13. UNLV's lucky that it's 12 for 24. They would not be in the ballgame. You know, Jerry Tarkanian is standing so close to us when he gets up, walks around, I'm about ready to grab him and say, why, Jerry, why the fouls? 42 to 40, West Virginia lead is two points. It's been West Virginia's lead since early in the ballgame when UNLV took a 6 to 2 margin. 14 and a half minutes remaining in the second half. Steps ball against Anderson. He dragged the foot. That's a good call on Larry Anderson. Dick, I ran around and shot on the floor yesterday. I was a little surprised at how slippery the surface is. That time he didn't really take extra steps. His feet just slipped, both of them. Keep in mind, West Virginia has won 43 of their last 44 games here at Morgantown. Their lead is two points. Tim Carney. Carney and the steal. Jones. Larry Anderson and almost hit back there by Quentin Freeman. Maybe the first time Jones has been out of control today. Gary Graham, who led Dunbar High School, one of the nation's powers. Larry Anderson from the corner misses. Fighting it out of bounds, and Brozovic saves it for UNLV and a fine play by. 6'10 junior from Glassport, Pennsylvania. Jim Carney on a fine pass earlier from Quentin Freeman. Anderson with the ball, two for 10 shooting in the game. They're going to need a little better production from him. Four point Mountaineer lead. UNLV 24 and 1. Brozovich open to Graham. That's Graham. Gary Graham, his brother, is a fine player in the ACC at Maryland. Ernest Graham. Two-point lead again for the Mountaineers. Three-point attempt by Jones. They need him. That's his fourth. Three-point play. And we'll have a Mountaineer foul called against Quentin Freeman, the senior. The first half of the second. 
What's the difference from West Virginia's game? Greg Jones. He's been involved in all the play in the first half, dishing off. He made the three-pointers. He made all the smart plays. It's the first time we've had to use his name in this ball game on that three-point uh, field goal right there. He's four for five on three-pointers, but on UNLV's cause, they're starting to hit some outside shots, which is helping Sidney Green inside. Exactly right. And here's Sidney Green outside short. Rebound to Anderson. Anderson coming right back. Larry Anderson now with nine points. So Green with 13, Anderson nine. And the two that Jerry Tarkanian needs to do it have brought UNLV within three points with 12.50 remaining in the second half. Now let's watch this zone rotate. If they've had a problem, they've been letting the guy on the baseline get free for easy layups. Russell Todd, this is the shot. Turned over, last touched by Quentin Freeman, so the running Rebels can come within two points with a conventional basket here. Brozovich, number 50, Green 21, Anderson 22, up front. Collins 24 is back there with Graham, number 32. And a foul, that's against Tim Carney. Forget a little later on, CBS Sports Sunday has that promising lightweight boxing 1976 Olympic gold medalist Howard Davis against undefeated Tony Baldazar and the U.S. Olympic Invitational Track Meet coming your way later on CBS Sports Sunday. Less than 12 and a half minutes remaining. Collins penetrating. He's done well that way. He does it again. And now it's a 47-46 game. Mountaineers lead cut to one. Jeff Collins. Let's go back now, Dick. What we said at the start of the game, UNLV will play better in a half-court situation. That did not happen in the second, in the first half. It's definitely happened here in the second half. West Virginia needs a basket. They've only scored eight points in eight minutes. West Virginia trying to hold on to their lead. UNLV, poised team. And the three-point attempt is missed by Jones. He's now four for six from that range. And coming down is Graham. Graham drive. He loses it out of bounds. I know they're shielding you. The benches are all up. Graham just lost that ball out of bounds, Dick. I'm, I'm glad you were a big guard or forward at Michigan. <laughs> Green is... A leading scorer with 13 points and 13 rebounds, and it's been a quiet performance, but effective for Sydney. Change velocity ratio. When General Motors Reference talks about stable. fuel economy, it isn't just a lot of wind. Although wind is involved, aerodynamics are tested here in 50 mile an hour winds because less wind resistance means more miles per gallon. This has helped GM double fuel economy since 1974. That's a fact, and not just a lot of wind. Living up to our commitment. Right now, today, we're the best GM ever. Where are you going? To get a Stroh's. That's about a 200 mile hike through heavy snow. I know. If you think of it, get two. From one beer lover to another Stroh's. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge. With Chevy S10, the hottest selling new size pickup in America. With available V6 power that lets you out tow Ford Ranger by 500 pounds. And tow twice as much as any import pickup. Taking charge. With much better V6 mileage estimates than Ranger. S10 pickup, taxi cab, and blazer. V6 power from America's truck sales leader. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge. Next Sunday, NBA excitement on CBS Sports with Dr. J and Moses Malone as the Philadelphia 76ers meet the New Jersey Nets here on CBS Sports. And an early second half rally by UNLV has brought them to within one point. We expected a running game from both teams. So far in the second half, it's settled into two half-court affairs. And at the top of the show, we felt like there was going to be a half-court game. UNLV would come out on top. Now, in the first half, we were a little bit surprised. It was West Virginia's ability to pass the ball quickly, precisely, and get it inside the zone defense. They haven't done that in the second half. And on the other end, 
finally now, it's Sidney Green and Larry Anderson playing like they should. They scored all but four points here in the second half. And they're playing despite foul trouble on seven, several starters, including a couple of reserves, and the fact that they have come in ill. No excuse, because that's the way it is, but don't forget, they're playing the Mountaineers tough on their home court. They've won 43 of 44 here. Carney, that was a tough pass by Blaney. He had to go through a lot of people. Jones coming in, asserting himself. That's where they beat UNLV in the first half. They got the ball in the middle of the zone and scored. 11 minutes, 20 seconds to go. Second half, Sidney Green misses the shot, but he's got to take the shots. Lester Rowe gets it out to Blaney. Blaney, Jones, blocked. UNLV got a piece of it, and now come the running Rebels back with Collins, good penetrator, good feed. Collins to Graham, it's blocked by Carney, the center, who has done a terrific job this afternoon. Maybe a little, little overpass right there, Dick. I thought Collins had the easy bank shot. Now, so smart. The game's close now. Who do we bring in? Tarkani. Let's settle it down. The glue, he's the one that ignites the attack number 14. The coach's son has come in the ball game. One of the top playmakers in America. He has the ball now. 49 to 46, West Virginia. They were up at one point by 14 points. Brozovic turned around, and it's a one-point game again. Brozovic also playing well. I think the that's a big basket, Dick. He makes he makes some of the, the big plays that don't go that go unnoticed. He knocks the ball off a guy's foot on the out of bounds. Russell Todd, Laney, three-point attempt again by Jones, and loose ball picked up by Jones, who goes right to the hoop. Missed the shot, the rebound. Taken down by Sidney Green and a foul against Jones. I sense that Jones is, is losing it just a little bit. Frustration. Shot, he, I think he's a little frustrated. He didn't touch the ball much here in the first seven minutes. Now, the last three or four times down the floor, he's rushed his, rushed his shots. And you saw the frustration foul there. You talked about Anderson and Green, and that says it. 12 of the 18 UNLV points have come from their starting forward. Now UNLV can take the lead. The last time Vegas had the lead was 6-5, to five, three minutes into the game. Now, they're in a box zone and a trailer on Anderson. They're in a box zone and a trailer. Feed inside, picked off. Tarkanian didn't get it through. And here comes Jones. He lost control, but first the foul is called, and that'll be all for Danny Tarkanian. That's his fifth foul, I believe. It is. surprised, Dick. I'm surprised. Tarkanian, Tarkanian is a very smart player. Why take a chance on a play like this? Why not just get back into the into the lane and play good defense? Why take it? That's the toughest call in basketball. Is it a block or a charge? Well, that Why was, put yourself in position? That was not a blatant foul, though, Steve. No, but I'm, what I'm saying, Dick, is he put himself in position Where to he force the ref. He forced. He made contact. Now he's got to make sure that the referee makes the proper call. He's pleading his case. Danny Tarkanian is fouled out, did not score. He had one assist and two rebounds, and he fouls out with 9.52 to go. And so the pressure and the responsibility of the point guard position, very important for Nevada, Las Vegas, and Jerry Tarkanian, now moves into the hands of freshman Gary Graham from Baltimore. Graham is number 32, and he will be a key factor the rest of the way for UNLV. Tarkanian fouls out. 49 to 48, West Virginia with the lead, and the ball with 9.52 remaining. In the Coliseum, 16,000 plus, and the Mountaineers have not had it totally their way. Lady, three-point lead on a two-point shot. Dale Blaney with nine. Steal, almost, by Lester Rowe. Nevada, Las Vegas has it. And now, I would guess, Dick, that we can look for West Virginia to pick up a little bit more half court, extend the defensive pressure. Let's see if there's any effect. This is not the way Danny Tarkanian wanted to rest and try to recover from bronchitis. Conference over at the scorer's table. It was last touched by West Virginia, presumably, and now more things are being thrown down. We've had a tennis ball. We've had debris, not to mention the ice. Dick, 
Mike, there's been a discussion here at the, at the scorer's table, and I see people holding up two fingers. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what had happened. I, if we... Well, nothing has been called and nothing has changed. But I don't know what the problem was either. Alley-oop to Sidney Green. And let's see if they give the basket to Green or to Graham, who really almost got that hoop in it. Give it to Green, who has 15 points. 9.28 remaining. 15 points, 15 rebounds for Sidney Green. And coming back with a three-point play is Jones. He has 19 in the game. And a foul at the other end. It's almost another alley-oop, Dick. They're going to call gonna, goaltending. The basket is going to count, I think, but let's wait and see. I think they're going to overrule it. Gail Catlin has his shirt off. Now he says no basket. No basket. I believe the one official thought the ball went in and counted the basket. Now, he must have thought the ball went in or else maybe a goaltending call. Here, let's take a look at it now. Obviously, the ball doesn't go in. There is a foul. It'll be a two-shotter when we come back. Dale Blaney commits the foul, but as we started to say, Sidney Green with 15 points and 15 rebounds, the All-America candidate, and it's really come down now to Jones and Sidney Green. And CBS coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this word from your local station. This is CBS. I got this coffee maker at the Sunshine Store. I got this toaster oven at the Sunshine Store. You can choose from a fabulous array of gifts, free or at special reduced prices from the Bank of Wheeling's Sunshine Store with certificates of deposit, individual retirement accounts, or a deposit in any account. I got this jogger's radio at the Sunshine Store. The Sunshine Bank, the Sunshine Bank of Wheeling. LSB. It's lobster, salad, and beef every Tuesday night at the Anchor Room. Lobster drenched in butter sauce. A salad bar loaded with your favorite salad makings and beef carved to your taste right before your eyes. For lobster, salad, and beef, all you can eat, it's LSB night every Tuesday at the Anchor Room in Beach Bottom. WTRF Television Wheeling. 9.15 remaining in the second half, 54 to 50 West Virginia. You remember the big conference at the scorer's table before. The Mountaineers thought that it should have been a three-point play. Instead, it was a two. That was the reason for the discussion. And then, of course, there was the Tarkanian the complaint that it should have been goaltending, which was not called. It was instead a foul on Blaney. Now. We've seen Larry Anderson for UNLV come out. He's got to keep shooting. He's got to keep shooting for UNLV to win this ball game. On the other end, Greg Jones, in that same role, has got to keep playing aggressive offense for them to stay on top. West Virginia 54, Nevada Las Vegas 50. In the second half, and Jeff Collins misses the free throw. Neither of these clubs are good free throw shooting teams as Mike King gets instructions from Gail Catlett. One out of two for Collins, and here comes King. So the junior forward comes into the game replacing Russell Todd. Todd has scored eight points. Two important games in progress. Kentucky over Tennessee, 30 to 24 in the first half, and Virginia, 32 to 30 over North Carolina State. Winding down to nine minutes remaining in the second half. Three-point lead for West Virginia. Blaney. Trying to get it inside to Sidney Green. Loose ball. Collins has it for UNLV. Down by three. Here's Graham. Blaney picks up Anderson. He, they know he can shoot. Overplaying the ball, and Tim Carney forces a turnover. Jones. Basket good and a foul. was Tim Carney, the 6'11 junior center, number 40, who started the run. The three-point play, Dick, is such a momentum turner in college basketball. I've always said that if you're going to foul a player when he's going up for a shot, you've got the foul strong enough so that the ball never gets to the basket and has a chance to go in. You know 
defensively. When Jones comes down in a broken court situation, he's going to go to the basket. You've got to stop him when he's got the ball. So the way the game is emerging now with 8.41 to go and a six-point lead for West Virginia, Jones has 22 points. Green has 15. So the two stars on each club are carrying it themselves. And Sidney Green tried to save it. It was over to West Virginia. And it's going to be UNLV ball as it was last touched by a Mountaineer. Well, that was a good defensive play by the, the center once again, Brozovic. Russell Todd replaces Lester Rowe. King is the other forward for West Virginia. 8.28 remaining in the second half. Sidney Green. And Sidney Green has 17 points, and it's a 57-53 game, West Virginia. Now, that's a nice shot, uh, uh, camera people. Because watch, they're doing something different now, Dick. Before, when they've had Jones at the top with the ball all the time, he's drawn too much attention. They put him on the wing, he can take a better look at the basket. He missed the three-pointer, but Mike King was there to stuff it through. There's the time remaining in the second half. Six-point lead, West Virginia. And a foul. Blaney fouls Sidney Green. Now, you talked about the defense and what they were setting up here. Well, they, they, they've taken Jones and taken him off the point to give him a, a little bit less defensive pressure. Now, once again, see, when, when you're in the zone, the best way to offensive rebound is coming from the wing and pick your seam, and that's exactly what happened. And that was King who got in off of the wing to get the easy bucket, and with Blaney committing the foul. Sidney Green misses the shot. Sidney Green, by the way, has moved it to the number two spot, all-time scoring. For the running Rebels, he makes one of two and a five-point West Virginia lead. 7.45 remaining. Watch Jones, who has 22 points, the game-high scorer, and five of seven from the three-point range. Laney now to Jones. They go for the loose ball. And we're going to have a jump, and it should be West Virginia ball. Keep in mind that UNLV, after losing to Fullerton State Thursday, wants to get back on the winning ways. And to beat West Virginia in their lair would be a tremendous accomplishment. Meanwhile, West Virginia would like to be in the top 20. They're driving for the NCAA championship berth. Big win for them here if they well, can do and it. Well, I think, too, this is a credibility, credibility game for West Virginia. And maybe for UNLV, considering their schedule. Except that UNLV will be in the tournament. I don't know if West Virginia has that locked up yet. If they don't, they're right on the precipice. Five-point lead for the Mountaineers. Collins goes in and draws the foul. Collins has been really effective. We knew about him as a transitional player, but he can penetrate as well as anyone on this court, and that includes Jones. No, you're absolutely right. He may be, at the off-guard position, he may be the quickest player over 94 feet in the country. He's a great leaper. He's been, but he's been such an up-and-down player. And not so much up-and-down in a single game, but up and down, period. He either plays well or doesn't play well. Now, UNLV is 7 for 13. Now they get 7 for 14 from the line. West Virginia has missed 13 free throws. And when you look at the, the teams that are going to be in the tournament in the final four teams, you can't get there if you don't shoot free throws well. One out of two, and that's all UNLV has been able to do. Just one out of two. They're down by four points, 59 to 55. Blaney, by the way, who committed the foul, has four personals and stays in the ball game. We have number 21. Excuse me. We haven't touched on it yet, but remember, this 40-second clock goes off at four minutes 39 seconds in the ball game. 6:52 left. That may force UNLV out of the zone defense. That's why it's imperative that they stay within four, get a little closer. And don't forget, this is the kind of game where fouls will not hurt so much because of the poor foul shooting in the game. Exactly right. As long as, you know, someone with four doesn't commit it. Jones. Jones with a two-pointer this time. Six-point lead. You watch the clock. Jones has 24 points, shooting over 50% from the field. 
UNLV going with the freshman Graham at the point guard, number 32. He has it now. And Carney tipped it out, and they'll call the foul against Sidney Green. For Green, that is his third personal foul. Team fouls each, of course, in the limit, in the penalty with seven. I don't know, Dick, that at this stage of the ball game, that's a good shot. I'm hard-pressed to find contact on Sidney Green's part in that replay. Tim Carney will go to the line, shooting one and one. Free throw story. So even though the clock will go off with four minutes to play, the way they're shooting free throws, it's not going to bother a team to foul someone. Right. Carney, however, hits. He has ten points. He is six for nine from the line. Interestingly enough, Dick, West Virginia's been the type of ball club that has missed free throws down the, down the stretch like this to allow teams to get back in the game, but they've made the, the critical one. One of two there, as you saw the miss by Carney, rebound by Anderson. Patience important for UNLV. Anderson, 6.09 remaining, 62 to 55. They get it into Sidney Green, not to be denied. Sidney Green brings UNLV to five. If you can prevent him from putting the ball on the floor one time, you take away his effectiveness in that position on the block. Green has 20 points. He had eight at the half. He has 12 in the second period. And oh. Carney, that pass was intended for Lester Rowe. And Carney was Johnny on the spot. He has 12 points, five more than his season's average. Five and a half minutes to play, second half, 64-57, West Virginia. Danny Tarkanian, the coach's son, fouled out. Rozovich inside, fouled by Carney. Dick, that was a very, very nice move on Brasovich's part. Now let's watch a good move, position move on Sidney Green's part earlier. If there's two things that make an inside player great is knowing how to position his body, and when you get in position, being able to catch the ball and then go up with it. Now, they let him bounce at one time. Of course, the weak side help wasn't there. They let him bounce at one time, and he's got a very strong move inside. Rozovic, a 50% free throw shooter. That was his first attempt. He missed them both. And a lane violation called against West Virginia, so Brozovich will get another chance. 518 remaining, second hand. West Virginia had a 14-point lead at one time in the first half. UNLV came back to within one, trailing by six right now. And here comes the turnover. And there is Graham, the freshman. Shuffles to Anderson. Anderson brings him to within four. Great move. The move so many college players have a hard time making. You're going hard to the basket, stop, and shoot the jumper. Plus, he didn't get a chance to put it on the floor. Even tougher. Yeah, that normally is like a, you can almost go to the bank with a charge on a situation like that. Three-point attempt. This is by Jones. Inside Brozovich. West Virginia has the ball. Too soon. Shot it too soon. They want to start running 40 now like they did in the first half. Run 40 seconds, and then shoot it. 4.50 left in the game. Here comes Jones inside, and Jones with a great move inside. 26 points for Greg Jones, who's trying to show a lot of people how good he is. One of the best guards in the East. 66-60, West Virginia leading. Four and a half minutes to play. The Mountaineers' only loss at home was to St. Bonaventure, and Graham turns it over, throws it away. Jones, and he gets it. 28 now for Jones. Time beginning to run out. UNLV. The turnovers are costly. Now, what kind of defense are they in? It looks like a box zone and a trailer on Anderson. Carney intercepts the pass inside. Russell Todd with the bucket, timeout, UNLV. They're going wild here at the Coliseum, and the scoreboard 
tells you why. If you've got what it takes and really care, there's a special kind of life you'll want to share. Serving your country is a special call. It's good for you, it's good for all. Not all who drive fit the bill. It calls for brains, it calls for skill in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. High tech and the services go hand in hand. A whole new world, you're in demand. In the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You'll move up, you'll feel proud. You'll stand out above the crowd. In the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. But most of all, you'll earn the respect of the people and country you're there to protect. In the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. USA One. And we're taking charge with easy-to-own transportation. For only $49.97, you can get this two-door Chevette scooter. And now with low 11.9% financing, it's even easier to own. You put $1,200 down and your monthly payment is only $99.80. A brand new 1983 Chevy Chevette for just $99.80 per month. More proof, USA One is taking charge. Where are you going? To get a Stroh's. That's about a 200-mile hike through heavy snow. I know. If you think of it, get two. From one beer lover to another Stroh's. This is Dick Stockton along with Steve Grody at the Coliseum in Morgantown. West Virginia leading UNLV 70 to 60. 349 remaining in the second half. For you viewers who are expecting to see the final round action of the Doral Open Golf Tournament, it has been postponed because of heavy rains in Florida, but we will have an updated report from the Doral following this game. You're looking at Gail Catlett, and Greg Jones, his star player, has brought West Virginia from a one-point lead to a ten-point lead in a hurry, Steve. And I think the best thing they did here late in the second half is they've taken, they've taken Jones and moved him away from the point. They've gotten him away from the ball. They've taken the defensive pressure away from him. Gives him a chance to cut down the lane. He scored two passes like that. He's made a defensive play. And then on the other end, UNLV suffered from Tarkanian not being in there. The line on Greg Jones, 28 points, six rebounds, four steals, and two assists. He has been everywhere. And when Greg Jones had a bit of a lapse in the beginning of this second half, that's when Nevada Las Vegas made their run. When he came back into the flow of the play, that's when West Virginia opened it up again. Absolutely right. Man. Three minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Brozovich, the big guy, number 50, to Anderson. Clock has been turned off. Three-point play is good by Booker, the transfer from the University of San Francisco. And now it's a seven-pointer. Now, Dick, no clock. There's no clock now. Let's see what happens. I would expect them to probably spread the four. The timeout story, a compelling one perhaps, with UNLV leading only one. And they call the foul on Brozovic. Four on Brozovic. Jerry Tarkanian can't believe it. His son, Danny Tarkanian, has already fouled out, did not score. 58% free throw shooter, Carney on the line. And I don't think he's been very good today. Of course, nobody's been good to the line He today. probably has been as good as anyone, actually, <laughs> right. Steve. He is 6 for 10, which, the way things are going today, is pretty good. <laughs> Unsung hero in this game is the man at the free throw line. still three minutes left. UNLV does not have to score in a hurry. They have to get, most of all, a good shot at the basket, and not necessarily a three-point play. Sometimes it's better to go inside and get your sure two-pointer with green. And also, Steve, as we look at Jerry Tarkanian, who was at Long Beach State, went to the Final Four with UNLV in 1977, lost in the semis to Carolina. And if they can have the threat of the outside shot, that could open things up for Sidney Green inside. You made that point earlier, and I think you're absolutely correct. Certainly, they can't miss free throws and let this happen. It's Russell Todd, and that's exactly what they can't have happen. Less than three minutes to play. West Virginia by 11. Two on one, three on one break.
Sidney Green, no basket. Foul, he'll go to the line. But spectacular slam dunks by Russell Todd and Lester Rowe, the two forwards, and Gail Catlin sitting in pretty good position. Not so for Jerry Tarkanian. For the home team, no better time to get a dunk for the fans than at this point in the ballgame. Now, on this end, obviously, West Virginia does not want to stop the clock and put them at the free throw line. But when you get juiced up, you're playing well, the game's going like it is, those things happen. And UNLV is missing free throws. It cost them. Jones. Jones now with 30 points in the ballgame. a little bit. Rosovich on the good feed from Graham at 78 to 65 with now 151 remaining. Long way to go for UNLV. Time running out and Blaney on the feed. And West Virginia is going to roll to their 19th victory. Sidney Green comes back, but West Virginia will gladly trade hoops with him. Virginia. Now, what does West Virginia have to do to get in the NCAA tournament? They've got to play well in their conference tournament. One or two wins here to close out the season. They can't afford to get knocked out early in a tournament. Preferably, they win the whole thing. Jeff Collins with a three-pointer. UNLV has not given up battling. It's 82 to 70 with 58 seconds to go. Steal, Larry Anderson. And Graham goes in. The basket will pass. Virginia. So now, all of a sudden, UNLV is within 10 points and will go to the line with 52 seconds. Danny Tarkanian. What must be going through his mind, knowing that when he's healthy and he can run the team, UNLV rolls. He's almost helpless today with his bronchitis, and of course, he fouled out. But the fast break story is all West Virginia. West Virginia 28, UNLV 8, West Virginia 82, UNLV 72. at the facts. Welcome to America, Mr. Ross. You're a professional. You live, eat, and breathe well, information. I really want to thank you for allowing us this interview. If we could. But as good as you are, you can't do it alone. Let's go. We got a deadline to meet. You need good people and office automation from digital. Digital Equipment Corporation makes office automation for professionals. We need some more background. For people who need all kinds of information from other people, from other places, from other computers. With just one terminal on every desk, Digital brings every office automation function to everyone in the office. Here's your cover. The world's largest computer company doesn't do that. We did it. But the world's second largest does. Digital Equipment Corporation. Computers for professionals, from professionals. Beatigo Creek, Louisiana, and Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Beatigo Creek means bass, fat and tasty. And Milwaukee means beer, cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer, and the smooth golden light taste of old Milwaukee light. And old Milwaukee light. Tastes as great as their name. Let me tell you, it doesn't get any better than this. 52 seconds remaining in the second half. West Virginia 82, UNLV 72. Each team possessing one of the super players, one of the outstanding people who really carry the team on the shoulders. Greg Jones, 19 of his 30 points in the second half has been the penetrating guard, the passing guard, a rebounding guard, and a good score from the long range. Sidney Green, the All-American center at 6'9", who's tried to do it inside and out. He's had 22 points, but Jones has been the man, and his team has had the lead. There's no question that early in the ball game, UNLV got off to a, a good start. Greg Jones got into the game, and they led at halftime. In the second half, UNLV got off to a good start. 
Jones got back in the ball game. Now it looks like they'll come out on top. And UNLV has hung in there without their star point guard, Danny Tarkanian, who was fouled out of the game, was not 100% in West Virginia, taking advantage of every opportunity. I don't know that West Virginia has played a better game than they did today. I don't know anybody on West Virginia who did not play a good game. They played together well. They, they, this, is their, this is an outstanding performance. Now, how does two, two losses in a row hurt UNLV? And is it good to lose a game before you go into the tournament? I don't believe any of those things. I don't think this road trip hurts their confidence. They've played a very tough team in Fullerton on the road. This is a, a very terrible place to play and come out with the win. Plus, they played over adversity and health and injuries. It's, they'll go back and regroup, and they'll be ready for the tournament. They'll lose their number one ranking. And, of course, they've lost their unbeaten season Thursday night. A lot of things were stacked against them coming into this game because of the loss, the luster off of the unbeaten season. Sidney Green comes in for two, 24 points for him. But playing two games on the road, just a little bit too much for Jerry Tarkanian's club, who now must try to get his team well, healthy. And we're also talking about Eldridge Hudson, the outstanding freshman forward, who I think could have been a big factor in this game, but did not play. Oh, yeah. So how does Hudson's absence affect this team? Well, if I told you that Hudson was a 6'6", power forward, who is great around the basket, can shoot the ball past, and can dribble it, I don't have to tell you anything more. A player with that type of ability makes this a, an awesome team that has won 24 in a row before he got hurt. There he is, the prep school player of the year last year in Los Angeles. He has loose cartilage in his knee, hasn't been able to really jump and do too much since he suffered the hyperextension of the left knee. Now, West Virginia's made enough bad mistakes here in the last minute and a half when they should have salted the game away. Let's see now if they'll just be patient and, and, and run time and, and put this game away. Carney is going to go to the line. West Virginia. Wanting national exposure, playing out of the Atlantic 10, which does not get much national exposure at all. Wanting to prove something today. Ron, I think they have. Wanting to prove that, number one, they have a, an enthusiastic crowd, which they proved before the opening tip. And the other thing is that they could play a scrappy running game with the best of them. And UNLV did come in number one here. So a, a tremendous effort for West Virginia and a great showpiece for Greg Jones. Three-point attempt by Booker misses. 27 seconds remaining. And, and Dick, I don't think there's any question about the fact that a win like this is very important to their tournament chances. I think it is. They beat the number one team. And yeah, Catlett has to be a bit frustrated here because his team is just it's like sand in, in the finger. He's the best. Green fouled out of the ball game and a fine performance for Sidney Green, Steve. 24 points and 16 rebounds. The only time he didn't really do it was early. Well, and you're right when you said that it's been basically a quiet performance. And it's funny, even in the Fullerton State game, people say he did not play well. Well, I, I love to have a as a coach, I'd love to have a player who scores 18 points and doesn't play well. And taken out, Greg Jones. Chevrolet player of the game for today is indeed Greg Jones of West Virginia, the 6'1 senior guard from Youngstown, Ohio. 32 points, 7 rebounds, 
four steals and two assists, and he scored 16 points in the last 10 minutes, so he did it in the clutch. And Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to be shared equally by the general scholarship funds of both schools to assist students in all academic fields. Two-shot foul with five seconds to go. Well, as we look at the road to Albuquerque, Sidney Green is going to be performing in the NCAA championships. They've won the PCAA championship. They've already clinched that. And I think West Virginia will also find a way in. Well, I think as we look, look into the uh, playoffs here, Dick, the, the NCAA championship, I don't think there's any question. Teams play well at certain stretches of the season. Let's look at a couple of teams that are playing well down the stretch. Kentucky's playing well. Iowa's coming on strong. So keep those, those teams in mind as we go into the tournament. I want to say a word about the man you just saw coming to the bench, Tim Carney. Unsung hero without a doubt. 15 points, 9 Tony. rebounds, 5 assists, 3 block shots, and 2 steals. He had a tough job this year to take over for two veteran strong centers. The crowd got on him early. People said he was the weak link. Today, he showed what he was made of. Okay. And I'll tell you what he did very well, especially in the first half, with those steals. And a couple times, they didn't come up with a steal, but he prevented the ball from getting inside to Sidney Green. Four seconds to go. Intercepted. And we still have two seconds remaining. The Tarkanian group, Jerry the coach and Danny the son. Danny, who has a 3.84 business school average, an intelligent boy. Well, and you saw Hudson there, somebody putting their arms around Hudson. He wanted to go in the ball game. They're holding him back. Sure he did, but Jerry Tarkanian is smart. He's got to get ready for the postseason. We'll need Hudson then. Game is over. West Virginia. 44 of 45 here at the Coliseum. playing in Morgantown, West Virginia, where the Mountaineers hardly ever lose. And West Virginia, agonizing for national exposure, showed what they're about. And we can expect to see both of these teams, UNLV, of course, having wrapped up the PCAA championship in the NCAA championships. Coming up, Brent Musburger in the studio. And so UNLV regrouping, getting set for their conference tournament. This is Dick Stockton for Steve Brody saying so long for Morgantown, West Virginia, where the final score was West Virginia 78, UNLV 67. Stay tuned to CBS Sports as Brent Musburger will have the latest from CBS Sports Control. NCAA basketball has been a presentation of CBS Sports.